Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video what we'll be covering is how to have your animations retarget to a new character or a new mesh in real time so you don't have to create the new animations for every single character. What you can do is simply just change the mesh in your game and you can even do this while the player is playing and the animations will then be automatically retargeted over. All you need to do is set up one thing once and then that is it. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today so you can see that I've got my own SWAT character from Mixmo and it is using the animations from the Unreal Engine mannequin and I haven't retarded these over. What I've done is set up a system which will do it automatically. Now you might notice this looks a little bit weird. That's because the animations for the mannequin are quite are a little bit robotic and not perfect for this specific skeleton. However, obviously you can use your own animations which you probably will be doing anyway and your own characters and you can also spend more time getting into more of the intricate details so that it looks a lot better and a lot nicer for you as well. So this is what we'll be going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we obviously want to import the character that we're going to be using. Now I imagine you've probably already done this and so have I. However, if you haven't done this already, I'll leave a link in the description down below and on screen now to where you can go and watch a video on how to do that. Because what I've done is I've got a character from Mixmo and imported it in here. Again, this hasn't got any animations as I'm retargeting them from elsewhere. But this is the character I've got. It's just a simple SWAT character from Mixamo, as you can see perfectly here. Once we've done that, what we want to do is create something called an IK rig for this character. So we can hit control space to open our content browser. We will right click in some empty space, go to animation, retargeting, IK rig. Then I'm gonna name this IK underscore SWAT or Mixamo, for example, if you want to have this with all of your Mixamo characters, but I'm going to call this SWAT as that is the character I have. Then in the top right, once you've opened it up, you have the preview skeletal mesh, which we are going to set to the character we want. So I, I will use mine SWAT character like so. Now we need to create the chains for all of these bones. So what we're going to do is firstly, actually what I'm going to do is right click on the hips and set that as the retarget root. So this is the root of our character. Then we'll select the spine and go down to the final spine we have. So I have spine, spine one, and spine two. I will hold shift and select the last one as well. So that selects all of them. Then in the bottom right, I'll add new chain. And you can see the chain name is spine. That's perfect. Start bone and end bone are all correct. And we will add chain like so. And now you can see we have this chain here of all of the correct bones that we want. And we're going to do this for all of them. So then we can also get neck, head, and head top end, add chain, head, perfectly like so. So what we're doing is we're just creating chains of all the different bones that you have in the skeleton so it knows what to retarget. We then just do the same with the arm. So left shoulder, down to left hand, add chain, left arm, that makes sense. Then I'll do the fingers as well. So left hand, thumb, select the first one, hold shift, select the final one, add new chain. This name hasn't worked, it's still just left arm, so we'll rename it to left thumb. Add chain, and we're gonna do this for all of the ones that we have. So every single bone that you have in your skeleton, we want to create a chain, an appropriate chain for it. So this one will be left index. Then we've got the middle finger, so we will do left middle, add chain, then the ring. And what's good about this as well is if you give it a good name like for example left ring left arm head spine all of that if the other character that you have as well the other ik rig has similar names it will automatically match them together at a later stage which i'll show you later on in the video left pinky so now we've got all of the left arm done let's go on to the right as well so we've got right shoulder to right hand and that is the right arm as well then we have the thumb so you see it's quite a repetitive process but very simple as well once you know what you're doing and this saves us a lot of time later on so we don't have to do this for every single character we don't have to retarget all of these separate animations this we can just do this this one time and it'll retarget all of our animations in game in real time nice and easy right middle as well now let's do the right ring finger got ring add chain and then finally last but not least for the right arm we have the right pinky as well. Now that's all that's left to do is the legs. So we can just do left up leg all the way to left toe end, add that as a chain and right up leg 
for the way to write toe end and we'll add chain. And now an easy way to know when you need to actually end the chain if you don't know what you're doing is you obviously see this looks like a chain, this looks like a chain, this looks like a chain. You can do all of these separately like so, but also just do what you think makes the most sense for you. So if you don't want all the individual detail on the fingers, you can just do left shoulder all the way down to left hand pinky four. Do all of that as one chain. But again, do what makes the most sense for you and your character. Once we've done that, we will save it like so. Then we also need to do this exact same thing for our other character that we want to send the animations to or from. So I'm sending them to the IK SWAT, but I want to take them from the mannequin. Now, if you're doing the mannequin as well, you already have this set up. If you go to characters, mannequins, rigs, we have IK mannequin here, which is a rig. It's the exact same thing that we've just done. So you see you have spine, left arm, pinky, all of this set up for us. However, if you're using a different character, which you might be doing, you'll want to set it up again, like I've just shown you here. And once you've got all of those set up, what we want to do is create an IK retargeter. So we'll right click in an empty space in the content browser once again, go to animation, retargeting, and this time we're creating an IK retargeter. So I'll get that and I'll name this IKR underscore SWAT, for example, again, as that's what I want this for. We'll open it up, then back in the top right, we'll set the source asset, and this is what you want to copy the animations from. So again, I want to copy them from the mannequin. So I'll search for IK underscore mannequin. And then the target asset is what you want to set the animations to. So we'll put them onto IK SWAT, like so. Now you can see they're kind of inside of each other, so we can move the target mesh offset like this to move them aside. And then what you also notice as well is they are in different poses. So the mannequin is in an A pose and the SWAT is in a T pose. It doesn't really matter which one you do it in, however the poses do need to be the exact same. Now an A pose is kind of becoming more industry standard. That one makes more sense as it's a more natural pose and a more natural way for a person to stand. So A pose is what I'm going to be doing as well. So we're going to change the T pose to an A pose. However, you can do it either way if you think a T pose is easier or if you think it works better for what you're doing. And also if you're using a different character in the mannequin and both are already in a T pose, you can just leave it at that perfectly fine. It doesn't need to be an A pose and it doesn't need to be a T pose, but both characters need to be in the same pose. So what we can do to change it is depending on which version of Unreal Engine you're using, next to reset here, you might have an edit button to the left. However, I obviously don't. So if you don't, you want to go to running retarget at the top, press the three dots and then press edit retarget pose. And now this gives us the ability to actually edit where these bones are rotating and everything. So what I'm gonna do is select the right shoulder and then you can see we can now rotate this like so. I'm not gonna do the shoulder actually because I don't think that looks too natural. I'll just do the right arm and I'm gonna move this down like so. Let me also keep a note of how much I'm moving it. So I'm gonna move it down about 40 degrees I think. And just so I know that I'm doing it correctly on all of, on both sides, I'm gonna do them at the same time. So now let's go to left arm. I'm gonna move it down 40 degrees. Cause again, now I know that I'm both, I'm doing them both the exact same. So it is, so it's mirrored. Then we'll go to right forearm. And I'm changing this one because you can see on the mannequin that kind of stick out a little bit. So let's do that here as well. Let's move it out about 20 degrees. That works for me. Then let's get the left arm and do the same thing. Or oh, sorry, the left forearm, sorry in about 20 degrees. Again, yours might be different. However, this is what looks good for me. And I might also then rotate the hand or actually probably just the arm, rotate it to face inwards a little bit. Let's do 10 degrees, not much, but just a slight movement. And this is really where you can get a lot more in depth. So you can go into a lot of detail here of actually changing all of this a lot more. And if you want, you can also toggle off snapping by selecting this blue button here so it's not on, that's toggle snapping, or change the amount it snaps by by selecting the number next to it. So that is gonna be good for me. I think that looks good. Once you're happy with it, you can go back up here, press the three dots, and go back to run retargeter. So now they are in the same pose like so. And to test out, what we can do is in the bottom right, we'll go to chain mapping, and you can see if all of this has gone over correctly. So you see we have the target chain of spine, source chain of spine, head and head, so on and so forth. You see if they are similar or the exact same, it will automatically pair them together. So just go through these and double check that everything is correct. And for me, that all looks good.
We will then go to the asset browser, scroll down until we find an animation, for example, run forward, double click it, and you can see this working now. We have the animations retargeting from this character onto this one. And again, this is where you can get specific in, if you're not happy with it, you can change the pose or go back in here and change the chains as well on either character. But I'm happy for this. This looks good for me and my characters, which I'm doing. So now what you would ordinarily do is you would then export the selected animation so you have that as an animation on this new character. However, we don't want to have to do that for every single animation we're using and for every single character. So what we're going to do instead is actually have it do it at runtime. So the next step now is we want to create an animation blueprint for our new character. So go into the content browser again. I'll go into my swap folder here. I will right click, go to animation, animation blueprint, select the skeleton you want. So for me, that is the SWAT character skeleton and I'll name this anim BP underscore SWAT. I'll open it up straight away. And in here, we don't need to create a state machine or anything like that. All we need to simply do is come out of the result of the output pose in the anim graph and then simply get a retarget pose from mesh. With the selected in the top right, we're going to make sure use attached parent is ticked to true. And then IK retargeter asset is the one we've just created. So I named mine IKR SWAT. Compile and save that. And that will now work perfectly for us. That's all we need to do in here. The final step is simply opening up our character blueprint. So for me, that is the third person character. So that is third person blueprints BP third person character. In here, we're going to go straight to the viewport. And then what we will do is we don't want to change the mesh of this character. We need to make sure that we do still keep this mesh in here. And I'll explain why in a second. So we will select the mesh, then add a new component with this new component being a skeletal mesh. Name this what you want. So for example, SWAT, and then we will set the skeletal mesh asset to be our character. So for me, that's the SWAT character. Now you can see they are both in here. Now, if we set this animation mode to do to use animation blueprint and the anim class to the one we just created. So anim BP SWAT, you'll see that they're now using the same animation. So you see they're not perfect there. That's a little bit off. But again, that will probably be because the pose isn't perfect. I can go more in depth into that. And also just the skeletons aren't the exact same, but they are similar enough for it to look good. So we can compile and save that. This will now work perfectly. However, you can obviously see that you don't want to have both of them shown at the same time. Now we need the other mesh in here for it to actually work because what it's doing is it's accessing the animation blueprint and the animations from its parents. You can see the SWAT is the child of the original mesh. So it's getting its parents animations and using them. So we do need it there. So what we'll do is we'll select the mesh, search for visible and toggle its visibility. Now, if we compile, you'll see that will stop working because what Unreal needs is it does need to be visible for it to work. So the workaround for this is then under optimization and advanced, we can change the visibility based anim tick option from always tick pose to always tick pose and refresh bones. Now, if we compile and save, you can see it's still working and playing the animations perfectly like so. So if we were to hit play, we can see that we now have the animations working on our character perfectly like so. We didn't retarget any, any animations. What we did was we created the retargeter and is now retargeting them at runtime for all of these different animations which we have here. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. What we've done today is we've set up a way for us to automatically retarget animations from one character to another at runtime inside of the game. So we don't have to create loads of different animations for every single character. As long as, for example, this character that we have here shares the same skeleton as another character we want to add on, we can retarget from one to the other like so. So we can go from the mannequin to this SWAT and this SWAT can share the same skeleton as another character from Mixmo. So they can all be the same, which means we don't have to keep making loads and loads of animations, taking up a lot of storage and also a lot of time of making those animations and animation blueprints. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please do make sure to like and subscribe down below as it really helps me and the channel a lot. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.